I was going to say that should be the biggest round of applause. So you might want to do that again. Ah. Next up on the show, we have Psychic Lori Van Nostrand. Now, you've been on with me once before, and I right. want to say you do a great job, and you work a little bit differently than the Every psychic here has their own style, don't right. they? Right, absolutely. And your style is your medium, and you really focus on that, and you're going to choose people out of our audience, not, or they're, they're choosing, their well, loved ones actually, are coming in. Yeah, if okay. a spirit, a loved one, a friend, somebody like uh, who wants to just get a message across now do you feel a lot of spirits with us right now a lot oh, of loved when, ones? when everybody was clapping the energy just went foom like this so they know and you you're want here. the highest energy okay. so I think that that's going to make a difference so hopefully and then before I came up this evening I also was going around and I've already got a couple of tips on a couple of people in here awesome so yeah so how long have you been doing this Lori well, um, at least 20, 25 years. Maybe not to this degree. It's, you know, something that I've had to work on. It's not something that just came to me. You have to develop it. Um, I would say since I was a child, I had experiences, and those experiences at times were very scary because I didn't know what was going on. And so by the time I was 19, I got myself involved into different spiritual church, reading books, because I had to know, because I was scared. Wow. What is this? Why am I seeing this? Why do I know this? So, so it how does was this a work? development. Do they just, does the dead people just say things to you? Um, well, let's see. I don't and know if it's actually... so harsh, doesn't it? Uh, <laughs> Deceased. Occasionally, I, I will hear out loud, just like if everyone is talking, but not not often. Usually what I do is like a movie in my head, wow. like a daydream. And you'll see sometimes I close my eyes. It's because I'm going within to look at that daydream. And with spirit, the way they work, as with most psychics or mediums, is through symbols. And these are my symbols. Um, everybody has their own interpretation of what something means to them. So do you literally hear voices in your head? No, usually it's more like they're there. And it's not really um, a language. It's more of an intuition or a feeling. It's hard to explain how, it, but, it, but it is, you, you understand it. And they show you things and automatically you'll see something and, you, and to you that means something. And you two and say you, that we're it's all like a puzzle. It's a puzzle, and you got to put the pieces together. And you say that we are all capable of doing this. Absolutely. We all have this ability. Everybody is born with the sixth sense, and choosing to develop it, anybody can do it. Um, some people seem to have been, perhaps in a past life, they had already been developed and they come into this life and they seem to already have a great amount of capabilities to connect and they don't need as much training maybe something to kind of like tighten it up a little bit but yeah so everybody sometimes can do it's it. something you have to discover that you have well it might scare you in the beginning mm -hmm. or you might I think everybody here probably has had times when the phone rings and you know who it's going to be or you have a dream about somebody and then next thing you know you're walking in the mall and you pass them. Um, it doesn't have to be anything grandiose. It could be something as simple as just running into the person or whatever, just sensing something. And usually it's the first thing that comes to you that is spirit trying to get through to you. Mm. Because sometimes we question ourselves. You know, We'll get something and we'll say no, no, no. You know, and that makes but, sense because a lot of times your first thought or decision is the right. best one. Yep, so. that's true. Now let's let's see if we can get some messages across. Sure. Where I'd do you feel to. the heat? Um, well, this gentleman here. Hi. This gentleman here. Yeah. You want to stand up? I'm sorry. Hi. Can What's I have your name, your name please? Al. Al. Hi, Al. Okay. How, How are you? Good. Um, when I was over there before, I was 
just kind of looking around, and I came to you, and I sensed a gentleman on the other side for you. He felt like a brother. I don't know if you have a brother in spirit, but that's the feeling I had. No, I don't. You don't have a brother. Okay. I have a brother, but... Not in spirit. Okay. Then I would say the feeling of brother makes me say that he was a very good friend of yours, and he was a male. Um... I also want to say that if you cannot at this time connect with what I'm saying, keep it with you because down the end of the week or something, you may all of a sudden go, oh, that's who that was, okay, because it does happen. I feel a wall and I feel skepticism with you. I feel like you don't believe this and that you are here because you kind of like want to make me feel wrong. Is that correct? No, it's not. Okay. Well, that's the feeling I have. I feel a wall. So Were you dragged here by someone? Nope. No. Okay. Okay. All right. Well. Okay. But, um, well, there's a message here. Um, even though I'm going to say he's kind of, it's kind of hard for me to get through to him, uh, to his energy, but there is a male and he is in spirit. And though he feels brotherly, he keeps telling me World War II. Could be a father, could be an uncle. He was in World War II. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, I actually feel that he lost his life during this war. I don't know anybody that fits that description. Okay. All right. Well, he's here. He would like to be acknowledged. Um, it's unfortunate that you can't at this moment, but I am going to leave that with you. And I just ask that you think about it, or perhaps down the road it may come to you. Because this person is only here to say hello and to let you know that there's life on the other side. And that we don't die. We never die. We just change. Okay? Nobody ever dies. It's just, it's like we're on a vacation in Australia or whatever. So I'm going to leave that with you. Thank you, Phil. Al. Al, I'm sorry. <laughs> Ron, is there a Phil here? I thought I met a Phil. Okay, I'm sorry, Al. <laughs> okay, who, who else would you like, do you feel? Well, I'm not going to go to any of my friends. Okay. <laughs> um, Back row, middle row. Yoo-hoo! You! Oh, this one oh, here. Okay. She's dying to get a message from okay. someone. No. Hi. Hi. Carolyn. Carolyn? And her birthday, right? We need her birthday? Yeah. What's your that birthday? Would be nice. Mm -hmm. oh, she doesn't want to say that. April 2nd. April 2nd. We'll leave it at that. No, I'll just tell you. Okay. Well, she's in 1955. Okay. Oh. Hmm. Uh, I just get the word sisters. Mm -hmm. And when I get that word, I feel like, I don't know if you have a lot of sisters or two sisters or, or what your situation is, but I'm, I'm getting sisters and then I get strife and I'm, I feel like scrambled eggs, like issues. Does that make any sense to you? From where I just came from, not necessarily my sister, but a girl that I consider a sister, that would make sense. Okay. A lot of times it's a feeling. Like I said to him, a feeling of a brother. Well, it could be, it's just a feeling. And it's hard. Like I said, I'm trying to put together pieces of a puzzle. Okay. I don't think so, my sister, there was strife necessarily. Okay. With so my you just came from a situation. So that, that energy is kind of around you right now. Mm -hmm. And as I tune into you, that's what I'm picking up. I'm getting goosebumps. So I feel like there's definitely a message here for you. Hmm. And I see that you're trying to uh, comfort someone and to be of some kind of assistance about this situation and to try to just soften things and trying to get people to just, you know, yeah, peacemaker. Hmm. And I also feel like one of the people that is involved in this situation really doesn't want to hear it from you. But the other person really does. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
All right, I have a message. Um, they're saying that it's really good that you want to help. It's a wonderful thing to want to be supportive and help people. But there's also, this is from Spirit, there's also this thing that we have where we have to allow people to make their own mistakes. Because from every mistake that we make comes a lesson. And sometimes, as a parent, I know that you want to save your kids. You don't want them to make these mistakes. And it's so hard to let go. But in the long run, they have to suffer, just like we've had to suffer over so many situations growing up in our lives. Because with that suffering, with that pain, comes a lesson that we must learn in order to raise our vibrations. And I'm getting this message from Spirit that even though you're doing a good thing, you need to step back and let them figure it out because there's a lesson for the two of them together. And I'm going to leave that with you. That would make sense. Since I am a control person, I want to fix every problem. That's yeah, there. I can be like and that if too. If I can't fix the problem, then I fret about it until I can yeah. find my way.